Good day grade 12s. In this lesson we're going to be looking at some June exam prep and in these lessons I'm basically going to be going through the stuff that you worked on this last term. That would be the second term of matric. So the multiple choice questions. It says an object moving horizontally at a constant velocity suddenly encounters a rough horizontal surface. Okay, so we've got an object and it's traveling at a constant velocity and then suddenly it has a rough, hits a rough horizontal surface. The object continues to move over the rough surface, so it carries on moving over this rough surface. Which one of the following statements is correct? The network done on the object during the motion over the rough surface is. Okay, so if net equals ma and we're saying we're talking about the network and the reason I've started with F net is because work done is equal to F net okay times by the displacement okay it's the force times the change in displacement where the change in displacement is in the direction of the force okay so it says the network down the object during its motion over the rough surface is zero well if it was zero it would mean that it would the Move, not move at all or to continue over at a constant velocity but we can assume that since it's moving over a rough surface it's going to slow down therefore we can say that the network on the object during this motion over the rough surface is not zero okay is it positive no because obviously it's going to be slowing it down so therefore it is negative because it's moving in the opposite direction Okay, the network on the object is negative, if possible. Is it constant? Is it constant? Can't be negative because work done is never negative because work done is a scalar. So therefore, the correct answer is D. It is constant because the net force is going to be constant due to the force of friction okay and the displacement will be the same so yes the answer is constant now it says a hoot of a car emits a sound at a constant frequency so I'm not going to draw the car because I'm really bad at drawing but here's a tutor which also isn't that great and it is emitting a sound on a car okay fine I'm going to draw the car so here is your horrible box car it's a really big hooter and it moves away from a stationary listener so he has the stationary listener and it is moving away okay there's its ears big ears okay which one of the following properties of sound heard by the listener will not change which one of the following properties of the sound heard by the listener will not change okay so do you agree that it's going to be what it's the person's going to do is it's going to hear a change in what? It's going to hear a change in apparent frequency. That's the whole point about the Doppler effect and this question is about the Doppler effect. So there's going to be a change in the apparent frequency. So it says which one of the following properties of the sound heard by the listener does not change? Well obviously the loudness changes because it's going to get softer and softer as it goes away so it can't be that. Okay, the properties of sound, okay, let's see, the velocity of the sound. Is the velocity of the sound going to change? No, because it's in air, okay, and therefore the velocity of the sound is going to remain the same. So this is not going to change. Its apparent frequency will change. The wavelength of the sound and the frequency cannot be both because the wavelength is actually stationary. Well, not stationary, it remains the same. So the correct answer is what will not change is the velocity. These are inversely proportional to each other. So if the frequency changes, the wavelength has to change and vice versa. Okay, so the correct answer is the velocity of the sound will not change. Now it says when a catalyst is used in a chemical reaction, increases the what? Okay. So the definition of a catalyst is that it increases the rate of the reaction by changing, by providing alternate paths. So therefore the correct answer is A. It does not affect the amount of products produced. It does not affect the concentration of the products nor the concentration of the reactants. It is just the rate of the reaction. So this question says the equilibrium constant Kc for this reaction is 1 times by 10 to the negative 4. So do you agree that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is smaller than 1, okay? And why is 
that important? That's important because Kc is really equal to the ratio of the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants at equilibrium, which in this case is going to be the concentration of B over the concentration of A. So what is this telling us? This is telling us that we have less of B than we have of A. Or we could say that the equilibrium is lying towards A, okay, or the reactants, or to the left. In other words, we've got more of A, okay. Now let's look at this question. It says which one of the following statements is always correct for this reaction? The mixture at equilibrium consists of equal amounts of A and B. Well, if it consisted of equal amounts of A and B, then this would be equal to 1. The case would be 1, and so that can't be true. Very little of A, we don't know that because we might have very small samples of both. The correct answer is mostly A. The fact that this lies very much to the right means that we have got more of A, so the correct answer here is mostly A. Right, now it says which one of the following weak acids each of concentration 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed has the lowest hydronium concentration. Okay, and it gives you your Ka value. Okay, so what you need to realize is that H2SO3 is going to break up into 2 hydrogen plus plus SO3 2 minus. Okay, that's what's happening. And the Ka value is the concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants. Okay, so what it's saying is which one of the following, each of concentration 0.1 with the lowest H3O plus thing, and H3O plus is the equivalent of two H plus ions because that basically is saying that the water, the sulfuric acid is dissolved into the water to form H3O plus ions and SO3 minus ions. So what you need to look at here is look at first of all how many hydrogen ions or hydronium ions you're going to form per of these, okay? So you can see that this one's giving off two, this is giving off two, this doesn't, and this is giving off two, so C is out. Okay, right. Now we're looking at the Ka value. The bigger the Ka value, the more hydronium ions we have. So we're looking actually for the smallest Ka value. And the smallest Ka value is actually this one here. This is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 2. This is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7, but this is 1 times by 10 to the minus 7. Yeah. So therefore D is the one with the smallest Ka value, which means it's going to have the lowest H3O plus ion concentration, and therefore it is the weakest of all these acids. Right, grade 12, these are the multiple choice questions pertaining to the sections that we have done in the second term. Please go practice, practice, practice. Have a great day.